Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here at this presentation today. We've had uh, two days of our summit. Uh, right now, we are at the peak, and uh, with two days uh, still to come. And we are in Boston, which is uh, a smart city. We'll talk today about uh, the case of uh, um, Messina, which is uh, a smart city. I'm Cristiano, uh, product manager at Fujitsu, and uh, I will tell you about uh, the product part and the business side of uh, this case study. Together with me, there is Giovanni, a researcher at the, the University of Messina, and he will take care of uh, infrastructure and uh, the demo, as you can see. Sorry for the delay, but so we'll try to have a quick demo to show you what we are doing in Messina. And, uh, uh, Vitek, senior software engineer at Fujitsu, he will explain the architecture and some challenges we found uh, during the project. So we're talking about uh, smart city, which is uh, an example, a type of uh, uh, Internet of Things. Indeed, this is, uh, if you type right now Internet of Things, uh, that's what uh, you can see in the Internet. Uh, just to be sure, who knows what uh, Internet of Things is? Can you raise your hand? Okay, everybody, fortunately. <laughs> But I want to be a little bit trickier here. So if we ask the same question, uh, what is Internet of Things? Uh, if we Google, for example, Internet of Things five years ago, what would be the result? Do you have any idea? It's a bit trickier. So if we do that five years ago, we will found uh, Illuminates of uh, Tanateros, which is a global magical organization, and uh, International Oceanic Travel Organization. So if you can see, Five years ago and today the situation is dramatically different. But it's back in time that we need to go uh, to start our case study. Indeed, everything started in uh, 2014 with uh, brainstorming. As we said at the time, uh, Internet of Things was basically an idea. So we sit all together to try to understand uh, what could be, what could we do uh, in order to exploit this opportunity in the city of Messina. The first step then was uh, a crowdfunding action. If you see the image, uh, uh, we can see smart city from different perspectives. Could be smart energy, smart building, uh, um, maybe crime prevention, uh, maybe uh, Snowden would be interested in this one, and so on. So then uh, the idea was to try to put uh, all these different perspectives all together in order to work together and to exploit this opportunity. Of course, uh, uh, then some organizations maybe an organization uh, had, uh, has more skills uh, in uh, smart energy, and then they would have bring uh, their own devices on that, uh, on this project. And then we needed to have uh, an infrastructure that could uh, handle all this information altogether. The crowdfunding action was actually very good. Uh, in fact, it exceeded the expectation. Therefore, it was possible the following year to start with uh, the development. Development, uh, which is uh, more or less as uh, described in the, in the picture uh, bottom right. So there are the Internet of Things devices all over the city of uh, Messina. Uh, for example, as we said, uh, uh, organizations that are skilled in uh, smart uh, energy could bring uh, those devices. Or also the city itself had uh, some um, devices that uh, needed to be used again. This is why the first challenge we found was uh, how can we get uh, the information from all the different devices, collect all of them, and put them uh, in one unified uh, point. This is the, indeed the goal of uh, Stack for Things, the second layer that we have. Indeed, Stack for Things serve to connect uh, the devices with uh, the, underloud, uh, the underlying cloud. We're talking about uh, Messina, uh, crowdfunding action, community. Therefore, the natural choice for the cloud uh, is OpenStack. Another challenge that we found, uh, uh, you know, Internet of Things, devices, uh, there are devices everywhere, is to monitor the health of uh, those devices. Even more, another challenge, big challenge, is to collect different information, analyze their over time, and to try to understand if some devices can have problem, to predict anomalies. This is why we choose uh, Monasca. Then we arrive to nowadays where we are in uh, operational uh, and enhancement status. So the project is live, more projects are to come, and um, yeah, we can see what it's uh, uh, Messina right now. So here, this is the city of Messina. As uh, you can see, uh, it's uh, in the middle of uh, the Mediterranean Sea. 
weather is warm, uh, food is great, people is friendly, so if I can give you a tip for your next uh, holiday, come and visit Messina, because if you go through the street of the city, you can see the device uh, uh, like uh, that one top right. So there are these devices all over the, the city uh, that serves to collect information for, uh, for example, four of these uh, projects that we uh, underlined here urban mobility and uh, e-tourism, and in particular, the last two projects, uh, environmental monitoring and uh, device fleet management, are the goal of uh, uh, the, the demo that we, we will do uh, soon. I will hand over then uh, to Giovanni, who will explain a little bit more about uh, the infrastructure, and uh, will give the demo. There you go. Bella. Bella. So, um, uh, first, uh, um, an introduction about the kind of devices that uh, Cristiano was talking about. Uh, this is just uh, a sample of the kind of uh, devices which are available uh, throughout the city of Messina, but it is a, a sort of a, a, a first prototype of a, a system for uh, environmental uh, monitoring and uh, data collection. In particular, it's uh, uh, um, an Arduino UN device uh, uh, which means having a, a microprocessor and a microcontroller uh, in, on the same board. Uh, coupled with a, a, a Tinkerkit shield, which is a, a, a way to really um, uh, break out uh, the all uh, um, I.O., uh, um, the, the, the pins available on the system. So being able really to attach any kind of uh, uh, sensor very easily because it's really a plug and play experience. And in this case, we are talking about uh, uh, thermistors, about uh, uh, brightness sensors, about uh, uh, sensors for uh, noise, uh, uh, environmental noise and uh, and uh, and so on um but this is just the first kind of uh, devices uh, involved. Uh, we are uh, expanding onto uh, different uh, other uh, more powerful systems. We already have used in the field uh, Raspberry Pis and other systems which are, let's say, under the single board cat uh, computer category. Uh, but we are also expanding on the mobiles in the sense that the mobiles uh, are uh, meant to be part of the infrastructure as we'll see in a moment. Uh, so in terms of the uh, uh, architecture, this is uh, uh, the board side architecture, so we have really uh, 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 what is called the uh, lightning rod, which is really the agent on the board which is uh, uh, its main goal, of course, is to interconnect the device with the cloud. Uh, what it does is uh, it uh, uh, is able to, of course, uh, receive and send data, commands, streams. Uh, it's also able to uh, um, uh, instantiate virtual networks, but this is something more advanced than at the moment is uh, prototyp prototypical and it's only available on a, a special flavor of this environment, which is a, a Node.js based uh, prototype. Uh, but uh, the, the main goal, especially uh, talking today, is uh, about being able to uh, really uh, uh, change at runtime the purpose of the device. So having a plugin loading system. So really what we call a Stack for Things plugin is just a way to really have user level uh, business logic which can be uh, deployed, we say injected at runtime on these devices. Um, and uh, of course, okay, uh, we'll skip the lower layers because they are dependent, of course, of, on the uh, uh, particular system uh, we are talking about. In this case, there's a, an abstraction layer which is file system based and is based on uh, a kernel module for Linux which exposes uh, GPIO really as uh, uh, virtual files on a, a sys uh, FS pseudo file system. Um, so uh, this is the uh, cloud side architecture. Uh, this is uh, uh, the architecture of uh, what we called Iotronic, sorry for uh, the pun, but it was not really intended, it was a sort of a code name for the project. Uh, it got stuck. But anyway, it, uh, it, uh, the idea was exactly that, in the sense that uh, we wanted to have these devices as a bare metal of the infrastructure, of course, uh, 
distributed infrastructure. Uh, and, uh, and so we really modeled that after, of course, uh, an OpenStack service. So it's really uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, defined as such. We have, of course, the APIs, which are uh, available through a command line client and through a dashboard we'll see now, uh, so through the web browser. We have the conductor, which is really uh, the, the core of the system, so uh, really what is uh, tasked with uh, uh, ingesting, of course, uh, um, uh, API calls to dispatch really messages uh, uh, among the different uh, components, we'll see now in a moment, and of course to persist on the database uh, all the information concerning the metadata concerning uh, uh, the IoT uh, devices, so really the identifiers and uh, other metadata which is useful for the user. Um, uh, in this um, a diagram, there's a, a part which is already available in the uh, OpenStack Compient service, which is the uh, one pagent, which is uh, tasked with the, the, the data and command stream, as we have uh, said in the previous slide, and the part, uh, the tunnel agent, which is really meant for the networking part, the more advanced the, uh, tunneling system. Uh, both are based on WebSockets technology, in fact it's US, uh, WS Tunnel and WAMP which is really a sub-protocol of WebSockets and uh, uh, its purpose is to uh, provide publish subscribe system and also rooted uh, RPC. And so now we get to the demo, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I hope everything goes well. <laughs> okay. Uh, not, not now, I just uh, tell you. Uh, okay, first of all, let's see if we have the devices already available. Okay, let's first switch then on the dashboards. Um, Okay, uh, first of all, the interaction uh, um, on uh, the uh, dashboard we just mentioned, we have uh, uh, a new uh, panel which is called uh, IoT. Uh, this is where we can see information concerning the boards as we have seen. So uh, as, we, as we have said, so uh, we have here Boston 6, 11, 39 and 38. Uh, at the moment, we see that they are offline, but because it, they didn't connect, and I will see in a moment. Uh, but anyway, um, the, uh, uh, here we have the descriptions of the metadata about the system, like uh, the kind of device, or a UN. We have the um, location, uh, and then uh, we have a list of plugins. We'll see in a moment. Uh, what we can do here is, of course, okay also looking up the information for the geolocation. And we can uh, create a new board in the sense that we can uh, really uh, put up a new board which is uh, meant to be an instance of a board which will get really populated when the board really uh, gets switched on and registers to the cloud. Uh, we can delete boards. Uh, we can remove plugins from the board and uh, um, now we switch to the plugin uh, list. Here we see the plugins. Uh, we have the owners uh, of the plugin, in this case, for instance, the admin. Uh, public, if they can be uh, visible uh, for all the users. Callable means uh, that they, uh, the, the, the kind of plugins which are really are callable, so true, are those which are really uh, sort of a, an uh, RPC. So we really have to inject that kind of plugin and then call and receive the response back. Whereas we have what we call asynchronous plugins where we can inject the plugin, we can start, stop that, and of course for any plugin we can remove from the board. And we can click on a plugin and see the information about the plugin, including of course the code. And the user, of course, it's, this is a user level code. So as a user, I can create a plugin and copy paste the code I have. Um, okay, and uh, in terms of identity as well, we have, uh, okay, a project which is called Boston, 
we have users, including one under my name, but what I want to see is that we have uh, new roles which are especially meant for this kind of treatment. So we have an admin of an IoT project and a manager of an IoT project. Then we get to the monitoring part. This is really the Monasca panel integrated in Horizon. And here we have the links to the metrics, the board's health, uh, um, uh, the Monasca health and the log management. And here the uh, services should appear. Can switch on the clips? No, no yeah, I switch on the clips because it isn't it's not working. No, uh, switch to the one clip. Sorry, it was uh, just a <laughs> network problem. A, a network, network problem, problem but uh, it's uh, no, no way. <laughs> okay, so just leave us. Uh, okay. We saw something similar this morning during the keynote. Okay, so just uh, a few seconds and... Uh, okay, anyway, good, we can at least see it live. We'll, uh, we'll see now the, in the um, monitoring section uh, the, uh, the boards coming up. Of course, let's give them some time. Just to give some perspective while we wait for this kind of devices. Okay, here, look, there we have uh, a way to see. These are uh, what they are called Linino boards because there is really a Linino environment, which is really a sort of a flavor of a, a minimal Linux uh, distro. In particular, is a, uh, derived from OpenWRT, which is famous for uh, routers. Okay. Not yet here, uh, but maybe it's because we need to. Okay. Let's. Okay. Okay. Now we are injecting the Monasca plugin. So the. Okay, let's see the boards first. Okay, the boards are still not connected. Wanna switch to the clips? Okay, let's switch to the clips that we have recorded because uh, problems happen. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you can see here, wait, I'll uh, try to skim through the parts, okay. Here I'm doing what I was expected to be doing. So I inject uh, uh, the Monasca plugin, which is really a plugin meant for, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, sending metrics and uh, uh, we have a polling time. Uh, it is meant to be different uh, for each um, board in order to have, let's say, different timings. Uh, because it's, uh, let's say, part of the demo, as we'll see in a moment. So 25, 20, 15, 10 seconds. Uh, okay, then here we have the, the um, graphs. Okay, here we have, for instance, uh, uh, okay, what was called the board's health, so also the monitoring with respect to the resources, so in this case, uh, CPU load, run pressure. And, uh, okay, here we see, okay, what we would have, okay, is this, we would have, uh, okay, this one. So you see that we have really the uh, green ones, which are the ones which are online and are monitored. So then we can see that we have arms and you can see that the status is okay. Alarms which are custom configurable, in particular uh, configured for a certain threshold over 
for instance, temperature, which was the reason for the lighter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, um, OK, here we get also to the visualization stages. So back to Grafana. So OK, here we have some heat maps. We also have the real-time graphs. We, can, we can't see them because they're not in the recorded video. Uh, you have the Monasca Health. Monasca Health is really the uh, health of the Monasca system, really the Monasca uh, service in the cloud. And uh, okay, here we have, sorry, we have Kibana, which was the log management part. In the log management part, we, uh, we can filter, for instance, uh, the kind of device by log level, for instance, and then, uh, as we can see, by host name. And so have a look at uh, a specific board where we also have encoded as messages the, uh, mm, the measurements to have another uh, uh, avenue to uh, really um, uh, have data streamed and persisted. And uh, OK, let's go a bit forward. And uh, OK, and uh, OK. The ultimate goal also on the Kibana side, in terms of visualization, was having uh, a look at the uh, four boards all over Boston uh, with the different kind of uh, 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 dimension of the, the circles and of uh, uh, the, the, uh, the shade. Man, meaning, of course, the, uh, the count, the number of samples arriving. So uh, the idea is, uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, as we can see now, with the lighter uh, part of the demo, that uh, we, uh, okay. So just to give uh, an explanation here, we have also the logs in real time over the shell, just to look at them. What happens is, uh, OK, I'll light one of the temperature sensor, uh, light, uh, just put near the, the, the temperature sensor. But the idea is that one of these really, uh, upon uh, triggering of a certain event, in this case, a threshold over 30 degrees, for instance, uh, just in a moment, uh, the logic in the plugin was, OK, uh, please restart, reload the plugin in the other uh, um, nodes in the area with a different polling time, really a, a, a quicker frequency, because we are talking about a critical event. It could be a sort of, uh, let's say, uh, um, fire uh, incident. And so we want to be sure that we are tracking really the phenomenon. OK? And so we can see that there's rebooting Monasca plugin. You can see, I will I stop at a moment just to have you look and so we are restarting the plugins in the, in the other systems. And so, OK, we can also see that there's the alarm. We can see that there are the spikes over the whole uh, um, graphs. And we can see also that uh, the, the count increases more, uh, uh, more quickly in, uh, in the boards, and they tend to be more leveled. Of course, it's not that dramatic uh, this way, but uh, you get the idea. OK, uh, then, uh, OK, the count, we have shown that. So um, we can skip this one. Uh, so this was just to give a bit of a context from where, where we started. Cristiano told you that we had this smart me crowdfunding initiative. What we had is, uh, OK, we have at least uh, issues with visualization because we have a, a sort of a built-in solution, uh, a solution we built, uh, we developed in-house. And uh, so we wanted really to uh, have something more powerful. This is really the, the kind of dashboard that we built of on our own. And so we have, of course, uh, uh, the measurements. We have uh, the historical data. Um, we have uh, uh, um, ways also to see, uh, let me check, not here. OK, here again. 
Okay, that was to uh, have you see that uh, also on our map we had the, the update of the, of the data. But uh, what I wanted to really show you was that uh, really we have, uh, okay, here, maybe, yeah. Uh, here is, the, the, uh, again, our homepage and the dashboard we have um, for SmartMe. But uh, here we can really zoom in, have the data. Uh, we have the last sample. We have historical data, we have some graphing also here, but it's not real time. Uh, this is just, uh, okay, this is connected to uh, um, an open data system in order at least to have uh, uh, a way to really make it uh, uh, public for government and other interested citizens. Uh, okay, and that's it for this one. Uh, just a quick, uh, uh, okay, not here, uh, let me have a look here. Just a quick look at uh, uh, the other uh, uh, system that I, I told you before, the standalone version of, uh, of Iotronic. This one has uh, some uh, more advanced uh, um, uh, um, uh, functionalities. Just uh, to, to know about, uh, we for instance have uh, the possibility to SSH in the system uh, through the cloud. Uh, by uh, a tunneling system. And we have a, a, a sort of a, a very uh, little version of a, a network management system uh, resembling, in a sense, a neutron, in the sense that we uh, put up uh, uh, virtual LANs uh, among uh, this system over WAN, and we, uh, so we are able really to interconnect these systems uh, on the fly. And uh, I think it's uh, done with them. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, um, in case of uh, smart city implementations, I think it's quite obvious that uh, with time your environment uh, will will grow. You will get uh, more objects to observe. You will have more devices for measurements. So um, you need a solution, a scalable solution, to collect all this data, to organize it, analyze it, and visualize. And um, because Stack for Things already integrates with OpenStack, uh, Monasca is a natural choice to, to, to achieve these tasks. And um, Monasca stands for uh, monitoring and logging as a service at scale. And indeed, we put a lot of emphasis on high performance, scalability, and fault tolerance. We achieve it by design. Um, Monasca follows uh, microservice uh, message uh, queue architecture. Um, we have a number of, of uh, big data technologies uh, which we use, like for example, uh, Apache Kafka, which is a massively scalable uh, message queue, uh, well established in, in big data projects. It is uh, highly performant. It can handle millions of, of messages per second. Then we have a threshold engine, which uh, uses uh, Apache Storm it is distributed uh, streaming, uh, mm, streaming processing calculation uh, uh, framework. We use it to evaluate uh, alarm expressions in the, in the threshold engine. And then we have InfluxDB to store the measurements. It is at the moment one of the most performant uh, open source uh, time series databases. Last year, they, uh, end of last year, they published uh, uh, the results of, the, of, the benchmark, of their ben benchmarks. Um, so on a single uh, AWS uh, instance, they, they measured uh, 900,000 values per second right through put. Yeah, so I will not go into detail to all, um, to all the components. Uh, well, in, in, in this uh, diagram, we can see at the top the, the, the agent. It is, in that case, um, a custom agent because of the limited resources which are on the board. It is installed on the, on the device. 
it collects the the, the, the measurements and uh, and also uh, monitors the healthiness of the of the system. We also have at the top left the dashboard which you have seen, and uh, we we integrate uh, with a Grafana dashboard so you can visualize your your data. Um, one feature I would uh, uh, like to focus a little on is uh, that in, in, in the context of um, IoT measurements, um, the measurements, um, they are different from when, you, uh, when you're uh, monitoring an uh, OpenStack system, for example. So they don't come in regular uh, periods of time. You, you have long periods when you, when you get just, just a few measurements. You have other periods where you, have, where you get uh, many measurements. And uh, with, the, with the traditional uh, aggregation functions, which we use in Monasco, like average, uh, some min max, uh, you also need a, a constant evaluation period to, to evaluate the, the, the um, alarm expression. Um, and to handle this, this sporadic occasional uh, metrics, we use the last function, which is, uh, which, which just we, we don't need then this uh, evaluation period. We just take the last measurement, which is known. Uh, and uh, it also has the advantage that uh, the, the transition, uh, if the threshold is exceeded, occurs uh, immediately after the, uh, the measurement um, comes in. All right, that's all for me. All right. So then uh, I think uh, for next time we'll be take care that uh, all the cables are plugged uh, in advance. So we'll try next time to do better. Um, I want to, to, to tell you about uh, the current status and the next steps uh, of this project. Uh, we are working uh, on six projects, uh, um, European uh, projects, uh, for about uh, $60 billion. And we will do that for the next uh, following months. We, we see that there are more and more projects uh, and products that we want to integrate. We want to, so we're growing. There are more use cases, more challenges that uh, are arising. And therefore, we think that combining uh, our projects uh, with uh, other OpenStack projects could be uh, a good solution for us. Also, in the next future, what we want to do is uh, one of the issues that we see is deploying uh, applications in the devices and uh, in the cloud. So what we want to do is uh, to monitoring all this information, uh, so from the application point of view. That leads us to the end of this presentation. Uh, just to wrapping up, uh, we have seen uh, the case study, architecture, a sort of demo, and uh, the, the next steps. And right now, I think we have uh, a little bit time uh, for questions and answers, uh, if you want, if you have uh, any question. Could you please speak to the microphone? Sorry. I'm Yuri Kutan. I'm just wondering what did you exactly use for the threshold processing? Um, as I said, we use Apache Storm. Uh, so we, the, the component we use is called Monasca Threshold, and it use, uses Apache Storm. OK, and it's just some uh, sort of uh, straightforward linear threshold setting not like correlation or whatever. Um, no, so uh, okay. you can you can create uh, well, compound alarms, uh, defining uh, alarm expressions for for uh, different different metrics. You can do that. You can uh, um, combine them with with logical operators, but uh, we don't do really correlation. Okay, thank you. One of example of uh, what we do is also with the uh, complex event uh, processing, uh, where we try, where we combine uh, different types of metrics, different types of logs uh, all together, and create an alarm on top of that. Uh, quick question on the Monasca: How is it different than Silometer? I mean, so I'm just trying to figure out what it is collecting, and Silometer also collect kind of similar stuff. So, I means. What, what would be the difference between Silometer and Monasca? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, technically with Monasca you are able to have much uh, finer granularity of your measurements. 
you can collect like every five second a me measurement over a long period of time and you can store all this data. The system is really performant, so you, you, you cannot achieve this with, with Cilometer. Um, Any other questions or are we good? All right. And great. Thank you very much. Thanks.